Welcome to this Call of Risk podcast for me. It's great to have you on the show. I'm so glad to have you on and I am, I can't wait to get into it because um, I think the thing we're going to talk about is a great one that people are going to really, you know, appreciate and value. So before we go right into it, please introduce yourself to our listeners, let them know who you are, what you do, and we're going to build a conversation from then onwards. Over to you for me. Thank you so much for having me today. Um, I think it's my utmost pleasure starting the year with a bang, I, I think. Um, so I'm Fumi Fumioni, I'm a therapist and I'm also a personal performance coach. And um, I've been doing this for a number of years. Um, my particular passion is drawn into um, building confidence and self-esteem. And I'm also equally passionate about relationships as well. Um, yeah, so I, I started out 2006 was when I started my journey. And uh, like everybody else, I think I've encountered, I've had my ups and my downs, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but onward and upward. So yeah, I'm enjoying every single bit of the journey so far. That's amazing. I'm going to ask you, why did you choose to become a therapist, a certified therapist? What led you down that path? Interesting. That's a very interesting question. <laughs> um, unfortunately, unlike a lot of people, I did not start out to become a counsellor or a therapist. I think it's my life's journey that um, brought me to where I am today. I actually graduated as an economic student. Interesting. In, yeah, in 2003. Um, but then I had an opportunity to, to serve, to volunteer in a non-governmental organization in 2003, as soon as I finished my graduate program. And um, that was like a turning point in my life. It just kind of spinned the whole thing on its orbit. And um, my work with the women, um, who were destitute and, you know, had challenges in their lives, made me take a deeper, closer look at myself. Yes. You know, and um, I realized that a lot of the things I saw in them were things that I personally struggled with, you know. And um, as God would have it, I made a trip to go back to the United Kingdom, because this was in Nigeria when I did my um, university program. Yes. And um, so I had an opportunity and somebody introduced me to a course and she said, well, there are these courses that you can do. Um, I was working with the council at the time and I scanned through and counseling jumped out at me. Now, you would recall, I don't know if you know, what well, a lot of people would know that when you have Nigerian parents, right? When you have what? When you have Nigerian parents. Yes. Counseling is not a course on the list <laughs> i know they think they think you're going to deal with mad people <laughs> even actually now so really even i've had some conversations and people ask me from what do you do and i say i'm a counselor they're like oh okay is it people that have and they go like that <laughs> <laughs> you know so i'm it's amazing it's amazing but um those three years that I spent back in school studying counseling was like an eye-opener for me. Um, I got to know myself better. I got to understand some of the reasons why I react and do the things that I do a lot better. Um, and I think I'm, my whole life is better off and as well as my, my clients as well. On that point, that is so amazing because this is what I find really valuable about what you do. And I'm, I'm going to ask you to narrow down a little bit on what you do as a therapist. But I find that amazing because when you, you see a lot of people take on programs of study, they go through it just for the academic, you know, um, achievement or just to get a job. But through that journey, you were able to know yourself better you know and I 
see that as really important because when you know yourself better, you know how the human mind, the human psyche works, you can take that approach to helping people better. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Now, just to narrow it down a little bit, do you want to shed a, bit, a bit more light on that? Um, no, I'm just going to say thank you. Yeah, it, it makes a whole lot of sense. Mm -hmm. um, because what I have realized, right, you, you, you can't give what you don't have. Absolutely. Thank you for saying that. You, you can't. Yes. You can't. Um, oftentimes, when people go into uni, it's for what's in it for me right what's going to make me shine what's going to put me out there what would make my parents proud oftentimes you, you we do it for the wrong reasons yes as opposed to who am i what am i passionate about what problem can i solve you know what can i give absolutely you know so that's for me that was like a pivot I would always go back to where I started from. And that was my work with those young women, right? And it's helped me to appreciate the challenges that I've had growing up as a young girl. Um, the, the different experiences I've gone through, my life story, and a lot of it I, I've written in, in, in my book. I, I just wrote a book. Um, a lot of it is there, the, the challenges. And uh, somebody asked me a question and that person said, what would you change, you know, about the things you've gone through in life? And when she asked, I laughed, I thought, no, nothing, nothing. Because every single bit of it is what I use in my counseling. Every single experience that is what, what I use. It's helped me to empathize, you know, it helped me to appreciate life even better. Yes. You know. absolutely absolutely thank you for saying that because that's such a valuable point and i believe the same in the same as well that everything that happens in my life in our lives mm. we just have to have the wisdom to see it you know and i always say when bad things happen they happen for a reason and you can use that those bad things to your advantage somehow to help yourself or help other people so i always say don't discard failure there's always an opportunity there somewhere yeah mm -hmm. and um you can give back better to, to absolutely yes absolutely. so let's narrow it down to uh, so that listeners can understand your area of expertise as a, th as a therapist because sometimes people say you know they're talking they're working with the therapist i believe there are several kinds of therapies so what's your specialty hmm. i am passionate about people who have experienced or are struggling with low self-esteem um low confidence so those are my area of specialty now i do work with a wider range of people you know people who have experienced um, um who are going through anxiety um depression um marriage breakdown mm -hmm. you know um some other kind of disorders, I do work with them, but my area of passion is self-esteem. And, and, I, I, and you asked why, it's because of where I came from. Now I have personally experienced low self-esteem. And it's fun because on the outside, people have this different, um, they, they think of me in a different way, right? There's a lot of respect. If people talk to me, people come up to me and they, they say a lot of things. They think I've got it all. But deep down, I know where, <laughs> where the, my feet are hurting. Yes. You know, I, I just know that this is not me. I struggle. Now, if you would ask me a few years ago, I mean, would you have a podcast? It's just, no. It's unthinkable. <laughs> Why? And, <laughs> and that's just so true because... I didn't believe in myself. Mm -hmm. um, she was, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't believe that I had anything to offer. I was a girl who, I was born in the UK, right? And at some point my parents moved us back to Nigeria. Yes. So, you know, um, we're talking about 35 years ago. Possibly, yes. You know? 
anyone who lived in the UK who moved to Nigeria was like a princess. <laughs> True. <laughs> you know, people look up to that you. That perception. Is a perception. Yes. You know, so you, you think, oh, you've got everything together. You know, I talk different. You know, people looked at me like I was an ornament. But I struggled to fit in. Mm. Now, I, I, I didn't believe that I was British and I can't tell you that I'm Nigerian. Mm. I didn't belong. I didn't have any sense of belonging. I wanted so desperate to fit in, to, you know, talk the way they talk, behave the way they behave. I, I, I kind of lost the sense of belonging. I was, my identity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I didn't know who I was, and that was the truth. And it affected me in my high school, uni. Uni was worse. In uni, I hid behind religion. I became very, very religious. Yes. I would have a lot of ideas going on in my head, and I just cannot bring myself to share. I have thoughts. Let me pause, pause there. Pause yes. there because this is this is really phenomenal. What you just said there—that you hid behind religion, and you are di you are diving deep into the minds of people who have challenges like what you've experienced. You know, low self-esteem and all that. And what we don't see on the surface is that they are. You there, there are certain things that they might be very particular about, but mm -hmm. what whatever that is, it's a shield it's that shield. they are hiding behind. Why does that happen? Why do they use that shield, even though it might be something that it's um may not actually bring them the satisfaction they need? It's convenience, isn't it? <laughs> Simple <laughs> answer. <laughs> Convenience, okay. It's convenience. Mm -hmm. Let, let's remind us what is self esteem, right? Self esteem, that's the value that you place on yourself. Yes. Right? That's like your personal appraisal. Thank you for clarifying, topic, for making clear what that is, because not a lot of people really understand mm -hmm. in simplicity what self esteem is. Yeah, and that's great that you've mentioned that. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what it is. It's how you see yourself, you know. How do you actually view yourself when nobody else is there? So it's just so easy to hide behind what people think you are. Right? Mm -hmm. In the meantime, that's not who you are. You've got those struggles, those mm -hmm. real life struggles that just plagues you. Mm -hmm. You know, you dream, you have desires that you want to achieve, but you are so scared. And, you know, you're scared that people would discover who you are. So you mm -hmm. just, it's just so comfortable. So how did hiding behind religion, you know, did it help you? Or mm. did it? <laughs> um, it created a sense of false, it gave me a false identity. Right. So people thought I was religious. People thought I was quiet. Yeah. In fact, if you ask anyone who went to uni with me, to describe me, they would say, oh, she is an introvert. Wow. She is religious. Mm -hmm. Very quiet. Meanwhile, they didn't know that that was a shield that you were hiding behind to cover um, up your low self-esteem at that point in time. That was a shield. There's a difference between you being an introvert and you having low self-esteem. So would you say that, okay, I think you've kind of answered that question because I was just going to ask if people who are introverts are usually people with low self-esteem just no 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 no, no. Okay. two different things interesting so but yeah. is there a possibility that people with people who are introverts could have low self-esteem as well absolutely okay so you can be an introvert and struggle with low self-esteem but not all, time, not all not, not all the time not all the time no no 
the key word is you being happy with who you are, being comfortable. You not seeking people's approval, mm -hmm. seeking people's opinion constantly, right? So someone who is an introvert would not necessarily seek my opinion before they make choices, before they mm -hmm. make decisions. But someone who has low self-esteem would constantly want to know what you think, mm -hmm. would want your approval. Right. I get that. Okay. So there's a difference there in the level of confidence they have. Absolutely. Now let's flip this on his head, in his head, on his head somehow. Now, what about people who are extroverts? Could an extrovert, an extrovert have low self-esteem? Absolutely. Good. Absolutely. Because I had a client like that a few months ago. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You, a lot of people hide behind shields. Now, what you would find a lot of comedians hide behind a shield of low self-esteem. Interesting. And unfortunately, what you would find when that is not dealt with, the downside is depression. Mm. And further down the line, you will find that a lot of people have committed suicide who everybody celebrates, everybody honors, thinking they got it all, they're happy because of what they do on the outside. But deep down, there's something eating at them. They're suffering. They are suffering. And that's associated or could be associated with low self-esteem in a particular element, Absolutely. A, 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 um, aspect of their lives. Mm -hmm. Now, what are some of the things, let's, you know, do a bit of analysis now. What are some of the things that are drivers for low self-esteem? What are some of those things, underlying factors that can make a person not think too much of themselves? A few. Um, so a, a lot the reason why I'm asking this question, sorry, the reason why I'm asking this question is so that yeah. people listening can, you know, identify the sources of low self-esteem so because i believe when you can pinpoint what's leading to that then you can start to solve that problem absolutely absolutely and that's one of the key things that what, why do i do is to create that awareness isn't mm -hmm. it so childhood experience has been labeled one of the major um sources it's it's childhood experience and, and that's true for me um you know, I said earlier that my parents moved from one country to the other. Yes. Um, and of course, a very good reason for them moving. But the impact for me was a change of location, exposure to a totally different environment, sexual assault. Mm -hmm. You know, so for, for that, my whole world flipped on his head. I lost the sense of identity that I had, who I thought I was. Yes. And I began to cleave onto the things because I wanted to be appreciated. I wanted to be known. I wanted to be seen, but for the, maybe for the wrong reasons, right? And for a lot of people, um, if they've gone through um, parents who, who are separated, is can have that kind of effect on the children because some kids go into the into um, the mind so that they feel they are the cause. Guilty conscience, yes. they feel guilty, yes. right? So that affects them. It affects mm -hmm. the way they value themselves. Um, some people, it's the, they, they've had trauma, they've experienced trauma yes. in their lives. Some people, they've experienced bullying as a child. Um, for some, it's illness, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Physical appearance, remember, how they look, weight. Yeah, that's, yeah, their self-image. Self-image, right? yes. Self-image, their health. Um, and I remember failure as well. Yeah. Failure. And that's another thing that compounded how I felt about myself because I mm -hmm. was ill when I started uni. I was ill and... For every time that I was going to write an exam, that thought, that experience that I had always 
I always relieved that experience that I had. And it just made me believe that I can't write an exam and pass. Mm-hmm. You know, those are limiting beliefs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know, we, we, there are a lot of things that cause this low self-esteem. Um, relationship breakdown. Mm-hmm. So you might not, if I have a really lovely childhood growing up as a young person, everything went well. And then suddenly things took a turn for the worse. When and you're an adult. Then, and you begin to doubt yourself, you know? So there's just quite a lot of things that yes. causes low self-esteem. Yes, thank you for mentioning that because I wanted to just list some of these things because I, I want listeners to make associations you know, to some of these root causes of um, self-esteem. And um, is it possible to have a whole self, whole being self-esteem? You can have what we call a healthy (laughs) (laughs) self-esteem. But I'm not sure about the whole well-being, right? Because we are living beings, right? Yes. We have experiences. Yes. It's how we react to everyday life that will determine how you feel, right? So you can have a very positive sense of self. You can have very healthy values for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, someone whose self-esteem is healthy, Mm -hmm. right? Not so all, not all. Healthy, healthy, healthy. <laughs> I like that. Thank you. Yes. I'm loving this. Really loving it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just like you, you, someone who is healthy can have headache. Yes. Okay. That's true. I like that. I like, I like the way you put it. That is so true. You can have, and that's just your, the way of your body telling you, slow down. You need mm-hmm. to rest. It doesn't mean that your organs are failing. Yes. You know, but it's just a way of you checking yourself. So someone who has a healthy self-esteem will be aware that they have weaknesses. Yes. You know, that they've got strengths. Yes. Okay. And, and, and that's that's okay. Mm-hmm. You know, so you would know that your self-esteem is healthy if you know, if you have a, a balance between your strength and your weakness. You appreciate that you have strengths. You appreciate that you have weakness, weaknesses. But you don't zone in on your weaknesses. Right, and so that's just one of the major differences. Mm. Someone whose self esteem is low, they constantly see everything through the lens of their weaknesses. Mm. You know, their weaknesses are amplified. Just it might just be a small thing, it might just be a small on. thing, mm. it but to them, it's the whole world is crashing down. Yes, yes, okay, now. I think I'm going to come back a little bit more on healthy self-esteem, not whole being, not whole whole self. <laughs> I'll, come back, I'll come back to that. But let's talk now about how can people start to take the steps to strengthen, to improve, or to acquire that healthy self, healthy self-esteem, so they can move forward in life, so they can understand themselves better, know what may be triggers that can cause them to relapse into whatever it is that they were struggling with. How can people begin to take steps to Mm -hmm. um, improve their self-esteem? And this is where your work comes in. And I I, want to, we're going to talk about your book in a sec. You know, we're going to come to that. I want to talk about that as well, please. No problem at all. No problem at all. Uh, One of the important things is being aware right Being how aware. did they create that awareness how did they develop that awareness listening to your podcast <laughs> <laughs> okay listeners make sure you subscribe and follow every single episode and this one should be on repeat <laughs> <laughs> well thank you for that it does help you know and i find you know it's interesting that you mentioned that because i think for me I have learned so much from listening to podcasts and I've learned in my entire academic, you know, pursuits back in the days. And I have learned so much and it's helped me see myself better Mm -hmm. and also know how I can, I'm, I'm able to also understand how the world works on a grander scale Mm -hmm. and then know how to navigate. So it's a form of, um, 
uh, self improvement. It is a self improvement um, element to educate yourself. Yeah, absolutely. No jokes is a, a, a part. Yes. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Absolutely. You know, you don't know what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you've got everything together, mm -hmm. even if you think everything is really, there's just something. There's always something to learn. Absolutely. Always Every single day. Learn. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So it's how do you create awareness? Just, you know, if you're listening, to this podcast now you know or maybe later on it's important to always want to desire growth yes absolutely you know? and absolutely. it's when you desire growth that you get to hear things mm -hmm. that would juggle your memory you might just have a light bulb moment right I, I was doing um i was doing a webinar on imposter syndrome you know where we put yes. it down into the different types of you know imposter syndrome how how it can appear in real life how you know please talk about that a little bit you know talk about because you know i've heard about imposter syndrome so a lot of our listeners may not understand what imposter syndrome is shed a little bit of light on that please so that our listeners can understand what imposter syndrome is and mm -hmm. how they can identify that in themselves if that exists well it, it's it's just it, it's simple and easy <laughs> It's fraud, you know, when you perceive yourself as being a fraud. Mm -hmm. When you have done so much work, but you cannot accept or acknowledge that you have done it and you, you, can't, you find it difficult to own your successes. You always, you know, put it down to other people's contributions. You know, you, you, you cannot see yourself has been and a lot of people a lot of successful people have said that they suffer from imposter syndrome that they're just constantly working and working and working and working but they can't stop to enjoy what they've done mm -hmm. you know they feel they're not supposed to be there you know i, I once had a i had a client who um she was called to be part of a group so she was called to a board meeting Mm -hmm. right? And she was a junior member of staff. In fact, she was one of the most junior member of staff. And her boss said, come on, join in. And she thought, me? Why do they want me to be there? I did try to make mockery of me. Mm. You know, all these doubts and questions propped up. She could not believe that she'd been asked to join, you know, the leadership board of directors to attend that particular meeting. Yeah. And that's one of the ways that imposter syndrome plays out. Mm. You know, you just don't think that you have a right to be where you are. Wow. That is really self-limiting. It is self-limiting. Wow. It's self-sabotaging. It is self-sabotaging, you know? yeah. It is, absolutely. And some people, for some people, it's perfectionist. They just believe they cannot make mistakes, mm -hmm. right? Once they've made a mistake, every single thing that they have done comes crumbling. Wow. That just is, because of that. That one. mistake. Yeah. And that's the lack of understanding of um, what mistakes are or what failures are. Mm -hmm. Because um, mm -hmm. a lot of the inventors, you know, of old and even modern day inventors have failed many times before they got it right absolutely you know and failure is a is a form of you know perfection you have to it's like you know when you get it's like gold i like to use the example of gold most times when you get gold in this raw state you have to put it through fire you know and you may see that the fire is usually seen as destructive mm -hmm. but what it's doing is purifying you know yeah. um that gold the yeah. same way as failure is, you know, failure helps us, you know, purify our lives just like gold does, a fire does to gold. Yeah. So it's understanding that, I think understanding that would help people not come crumbling down when mistakes happen. Because yeah. it's just it, it's, life. It, it's funny that you said that because another thing, another expression of mm -hmm. imposter syndrome is in micro, you know, we have leaders who micromanage. Yes. Yes. They can't let go. They can't let go. Yes. They can't let go. 
uh, isn't that I mean my goodness you know to be in that situation it's stress it's stressful just thinking about it is it's stressful to be in that situation where you want to be in control of everything to make sure it goes your way perfection and all that stuff and the reverb you get from that because it's not going to it's going to make people uncomfortable and when people react that's going to affect you as well so that's just piling on a huge um huge negative energy on you which leads to poor health yes you know bp blood pressure High blood pressure you know and everything like that and research have proven that a lot of people who have low self-esteem you know, it affects their health. It does. It affects their health. It definitely it, does. Yeah, it definitely it does. It reduces the body's um, ability to bounce back. Mm -hmm. It does. It does. It affects the immune system. Wow. Now let's talk a little bit about your book. But before before we do that, <laughs> what has been your own biggest challenge, biggest failure? that you have that you've had to overcome to be where you are today i have many biggest <laughs> <laughs> like your honesty thank you for being honest about that because we all do i do you know i've got many as well i have many i have yeah. many but just pick one and you know how did you overcome that so yeah one of it is what we're doing right now yes right and I think I've mentioned it before. Feel probably speaking, right? Fear of putting myself out there, mm -hmm. open to criticism. Yes. Right. That was huge for me. Huge. Mm -hmm. If somebody said I would be able to talk and share, uh, that's just a no, no, no. Mm -hmm. uh, I would cringe inside, mm -hmm. you know. How did I overcome? How did you overcome how, it? Yes. How am I overcoming it? <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you for no, because yes, that's a better question because it's a journey, isn't it? Absolutely, it's, it's a journey for me. It's one step at a time, mm -hmm. right? The first thing I had to do is to write what I wanted to. What was I afraid of? Mm -hmm. What are my fears? And I think for me, I, I narrowed it down to criticism. Mm. And where did that come from? I just felt that everything I say, somebody's going to question it. Everything I do, someone's not going to be happy with it. Possibly maybe the way I was raised, mm -hmm. because when we were, when I was raised, praise and recognition was not the order of the day it's certainly not with nigerian families or most nigerian families or yeah you know, african you always families. can get better you always can do better yes there's somebody else who's better than you why can't yes. you do it better yes yes you know um so putting myself out there and being open to everybody was hard so I, I started writing these things. These are the things I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of talking. I'm afraid of people's opinion. I was afraid of myself, you know, and um, I began to take a little step at a time. And that's why I encourage everyone, baby steps matter. Mm -hmm. You know, one little thing at a time and recognizing that you've achieved that is a huge thing for me. Um, so I, I started with um, webinars. I started um, with webinars. I do a webinar here. Maybe two people. If two people came, I'm happy. Yes. So that means less pressure. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. When more people attended and then getting people's response back. And it's amazing when people will come back and like, oh, that was amazing. Even when I felt I had done something that was just shambles. And somebody would say, oh, because of what you did, I was able to. So at, at the heart of everything I do, it's that desire to help people. Okay? So it took the pressure away from me because yes. I knew if what I did, what I said, helped just one person, that's 
done it a lot more and it's boosted my confidence yeah well. yes you know so that's how i i just wrote it down why am i doing what i want to do and one step at a time amazing thank you so much for sharing that because it's um it's it's what knowing that to overcome any challenge such as self you know low self esteem you need to take baby steps you know one step at a time but it needs to be progressive mm -hmm. because you can't stay at the same level you know and expect no. to change you know no. which is um uh, something that um we mm -hmm. need to encourage everyone to do now when you work with people so let's talk about your work before we go into the book. When you work with people to help them deal with, um, you know, confidence issues, low self-esteem, do you work with them on a one-to-one -one basis, or how how do you, you know, how do you get the clients you work with? So I work. I do a lot of one-to-ones, mm -hmm. and I do workshops as well. Um, one-to-one is great, right? Because if you are one of those that are suffering from low esteem, you know, there are different levels. Extreme so levels and middle and low, yeah, okay. Yeah, there's just, just different mm. levels. So if yours is really, really acute, like you just cannot, you know, suffer, because a lot of people who suffer from low, uh, low self-esteem suffer from anxiety as well. Mm, right, so my social, social anxiety. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, so they have social anxiety where they just can't speak with more than one person at a time. Um, so I do that with them. I do one to ones and I do group and I have some platforms out there where people just come in and they just want to just listen. You know, they don't want to be seen. Um, mm -hmm. it's a gradual thing. It's a gradual thing. If you have been suffering from low self-esteem for a long period of time, you just need that gentle prodding. You know, you want someone that you can be accountable to. Yeah. Or someone who is non-judgmental. Right, someone who's not going to criticize you, someone who's got your back, and just that person that can just help you slowly and steadily hold your hand until you're in that place where you know for yourself that you have moved and you are now willing to take bolder steps. That, that and, and that's um, that is progressive because um, you just don't want to take someone who um who suffers from extreme so um extreme low self-esteem and throw them into the deep end and say you've got to be on stage right now <laughs> no 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 it doesn't happen like that we need to remember that, that you just didn't wake up one day and found yourself in that state it's something yes. that has creeped into you over time yes yes you and know? they didn't they were not aware of you were not aware yeah no. no you're not aware you know so it's you recognizing that you are suffering from low self-esteem. Maybe that's why you've not been able to achieve your dreams. That's mm -hmm. why you've not been bold enough to put yourself out there. That's why you've not been able to contribute in your team at work. You know, you're high behind other people. You know, that's why you, um, <clears throat> you, you, you are making the choices. The friends that are around you are not you. You have the kind of people in your inner circle are not supportive, but you're clinging on to those friendships because mm. of fear of losing them, right? So you're making unhealthy choices, you know. I like that you just you what you, okay, so we'll come back to that. <laughs> uh, what you just said right now about clinging on to people who are not healthy associations is a mm -hmm. big one for a lot of people because I find that people who have like I know someone a friend who i feel has got not that i feel i know has got great potential mm. to be soup not just amazing super amazing but this person is the associations they have are not healthy associations and they cling they know that these associations of friends they have are not for lack of a better expression good friends yeah but they cling to them yeah why they're the, yeah the friends that take advantage of them you know they take advantage of them 
Yeah, but that limits their own growth. Yeah, it's one of one of the one of the telltale signs of low self esteem is people pleasing. People pleasing. You just do things to get attention. You just do things to please people at the detriment of your own well being. Wow. Because you you're afraid of being alone. <laughs> That's thank you for saying that. Oh my goodness, you are good at this. My goodness, people need to know you. <laughs> no, for real, people need to know you are good at this because you are hitting all those value, you know, points there that people need to be aware of. Mm. Because when you're a people pleaser, you're not going to grow because you're limiting your own self. You know, so to understand that you need to make changes means understand that certain things and certain people in your life need to go yeah you need to be brutal you need to be brutal and one of the things that i think can help someone out there is you just evaluate your life look at your life maybe the last one year two three four five years have a do that cross examination those people that you call your friends, what value have they added to you? Absolutely. How have you grown? How have you grown with those friendships? With those friendships, yeah. Or it could be family members. It could be your husband, it could be your wife. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but this is a serious thing, you know. Seriously. 90% of relationships or, 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 or relationships where there's an abusive partner mm -hmm. the victim that stays on if you just zoom in you would find that that person is suffering from low self-esteem low self-esteem mm. because they cannot believe that anybody else would help them as much as this abusive partner mm -hmm. So they're holding on to this relationship with their whole life. And sadly, they lose their lives. Wow, that is serious. No matter what you tell them, unless they come to that recognition, that realization, pardon me, that this person is not adding any value. It's, life is sipping away from me because mm -hmm. of this relationship that I'm in, that I'm holding on to unless they come to that realization, they stay in there. And unfortunately, people do end up losing their lives. Their lives, Because wow. the abusive partner blacks, does what we call emotional blackmail. Yes. You know? And that's a huge thing in many relationships. That emotional blackmail. Mm -hmm. Now, so, how can... Yes, go ahead. How can people... Okay, I, I, call, I'll, I call this value assessment. And I think it's something that we all need to do. How mm -hmm. can we value assess the people we choose to bring into our lives? You know what? Let's park that there. Maybe that's topic for another podcast. <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> going to say that that is a huge one. I was just going to say that's that. That's a big one. That is a that's big one. That's a big one. That's the, a big the, one. I think the, the litmus yeah. test for that one, the, there's a litmus test, right? You are the average of the five closest people in your inner circle. Your inner circle, yes. Absolutely. You know what, we'll, we'll pack that one value assessment of your inner circle for another <laughs> time, <laughs> you know. But share with listeners, please, the benefits of a healthy self-esteem so that they know what they're missing out on. And then start, they can start taking steps to rebuild that. And then we'll talk about your book, okay <laughs> right this is i, I mean this is such a this is such a this is such a you know what this is I'll, I'll probably say this is one of the most important podcasts i've had so far that affects every single listener every single person hmm. and i'm thanking you again for being on the show with me thank you so much for sharing this value we're going to you know keep talking about this and Great. then it's my pleasure please. thank you yes. for for having me um I, I, i'll give you a couple of benefits Yes, please. The first thing is your choices. Now, when you have healthy self-esteem, 
the type of choices you make, whether it's your relationship, whether it's in your work, whether it's in your family, whether it's in social life, right? You are the one that would stand to reap the benefits of those choices because the choices that you make will not be merely dependent on what other people think. It's coming from a place of value that you have within you. Yes. And, and that's, this is a new year. You're going to be able to make choices that would help you grow. Yes. That will not be detrimental to your health or well-being. And well-being is important. Yeah, mental well-being, more important, importantly. It's, it's very, very important. So the choices you make in terms of who you go out with, if you're a single person, yeah, you're not making a choice because you don't want to be left behind. Mm -hmm. You know, in the terms of your job, you're just not taking a job because, you know, you want to do something. You're taking on a Pay job because bills. it's going to add value to your life. Yes. And when you're in a job that you're happy with, you would flourish. Yes. You know, you would become an asset in that place of assignment that you were yes. in. You'll you give know, more value a, there, yes. Yes, as a parent, you know, if you're making healthy choices, you're not making choices based on the things that you lost when you were growing up, mm -hmm. right? You're not projecting your fears into your children. The children, yes. You know, but you are able to make holistic decisions when it comes to your children. You're able to bring them in. That is so important. That is so important. That is so important. That is so important. <laughs> no, seriously, because sometimes parents make stupid choices. They make stupid decisions without considering the impact it will have on their children. You know, and it's important. I'm going to say this loud and clear. Parents, single parents, you know, whatever, single marriage, whatever you do, Please think about what you do in your own life because what you do in your life will affect your children if you have one. Absolutely. It does. It does. It does. And the second one that I would like to, to share is um, self-compassion. Self-compassion. Talk self about that, please. Yes. Yes. Now, you can't give what you don't have. Yes. Right. Now, I'm a believer and I believe in the Lord. Yes. Right. And he said, pardon me for quoting this, but he no, said, please quote, quote the Bible. <laughs> I'll open the Bible for you here. Where's my, where's my Bible? <laughs> I will open it here. <laughs> this show is for everything. We consider it all. We talk about the Bible as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, a lot of things do stem from it. Now, he yes, said, absolutely. Love love yourself love your neighbor as you, as love, you yourself. love yourself yes absolutely you can give what you don't have thank you for really really talking yeah. about that because love yourself because yes. oftentimes we show compassion to people right we or, or we we seemingly look like we're showing yes. compassion yes right but when you fail what do you do? Do you kick yourself? Do you stay there? How do you treat failure when it happens to you? But it's easy to say to somebody else, oh, don't worry. You fail this time. You'll make it next time. Mm. But what happens when you fail? That is a flimsy thing to say to people when they make mistakes because it's not adding any value. You haven't said anything positive. No, no, yeah. no, no. So you need to learn to be kind to yourself. Yes. Right. So one of the benefits of having a healthy self-esteem is your ability to be self-compassionate. Right. Yes. To be kind to yourself, you know, to empathize with yourself, to show love to yourself. Yeah. When you are able to love yourself genuinely, then it becomes easier to love somebody else. Absolutely. Accept your weaknesses, accept your strengths, mm -hmm. accept your where you that you, know, you need to make improvements and all that stuff build yourself up to a valuable person and then you can give something better to yeah. your neighbors everybody else why snap back <laughs> <laughs> why snap back snap back that's your book how to build a resilient lifestyle self-esteem self-confidence and self-care you can be proud of 
why snap back? I love that yeah. term, snap back. You know, everybody that I've told that, that I've heard about my book, they're like, they think about the rubber, you know, the elastic band. Yes, 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 yes. I haven't got back. one around me here. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a way we were, we were born. Mm -hmm. We were born with everything that we need, right? But life chips away. Yes. All the food. And then it adds some of the things, some of this nastiness to us, mm -hmm. right? And so that's why we are all, as an adult, you're a product of your life's experiences. Yes. Okay. A child, when a child is learning how to walk, they say a toddler would have fallen like, Maybe 17 times a day, possibly. Yeah. But each time he picks himself up yeah. and he walks, forgets that it's, that he just fell. You know? Exactly. But that's how children are. That's how children are. So we need to snap back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and be children again. <laughs> Keep getting up. Well, not necessarily children again, but you know. We need to learn to just, you know, feel that resilient lifestyle. Yeah. That when things happen to us, we're able to bounce back. Yes. We're able to have, you know, whatever has happened to us, how do we retrain our brain mm -hmm. so that we don't, you know, live in fear, you know, so that we live in expectations that some things good can still happen in spite of what could have happened. Mm -hmm. You know, like you said, a lot of inventors, they've failed so many times, the one who started with the light bulb, you know, yeah. the one who we, we know all of these guys. Yes. Right. But we just don't need to know. We need to imbibe that. We, it's important that we need to, you know, and our world will be better off. It will be a better place. Mm -hmm. You know, there'll be less fear. There'll be less doubt, um, defensiveness. Yeah. Know, because oftentimes people are defensive. Yes. You know, they're micro-minded. They're, they're protective in, in, in organizations, in homes you just see the re the negative effect of self-esteem everywhere mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so yeah i know that if i am able to be where i am and i'm not anywhere near where i'm going i'm on a, I'm, this on is a journey. journey for me yeah. but mm -hmm. i'm not where i used to be you know so some of the things that i've learned are in snap bag some of the things i've learned from other professionals are in snap bag Every single chapter, uh, Chisabel has exercises. I love Every that. Every single chapter has exercise, so you don't just read and you read and do. You read and do, yes. There's no knowledge without action. It's nothing, it's not you don't get any, there's no progress. There's no progress, there's no yeah. development. You need, you, need, you, need, you need to work on that, um, on that quote knowledge without action, finish it up. Come on, we're <laughs> <laughs> and then put your name at the end so knowledge that action i'm gonna write that down now write that down write that, down. Write that down. <laughs> up and put your name on it <laughs> <laughs> yes uh, that, that's a good one absolutely and um your, your book is something that a lot of people will need to you know pick up and buy and that's available on amazon it's ever, yeah it's on amazon so you can get your kindle copy you can Fantastic. get the hard book yeah on amazon and if you are not so sure about it like okay everybody every author promotes what they've done mm -hmm. i'm an author now yay yay <laughs> <laughs> everyone promotes their work but absolutely um, if you go on um, a website it's www yes what's boost, the website so it's called www.boostmyselfesteem.com you have an opportunity to read up what other professionals, um, specialists have said about the book. So that can help you make an informed decision Speaking, whether you should yes. get the book or not. Fantastic. That's that's great. How was your writing journey? How long do you take it to finish your book? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying that because I'm on my second book journey now. Um, my, my first book didn't take that long because it's a small, it's a small book. Um, it's a small business. Well, self-help business slash personal book. Mm -hmm. um, it took me a few months. Actually, if I was to put everything into, into consideration, it would it, take me longer because a lot of that information was information I was building from a previous book I was writing. Mm. Um, 
How was your book journey? How was it? It was not straightforward. Mm -hmm. It was a bit hard. Why? Because, um, you know, you, you have ideas in your head. You want to do something. So my started out has um, an online work that I wanted to create. Mm -hmm. And then it evolved into the book Snapback. Yeah. Um, so the idea was to help my existing clients that I had because I felt you know, we, we get to meet once a week, which is good. But if yeah. they had something that they were doing, you know, reading, that can help them become more independent. Because mm -hmm. my my aim, or my, my mantra has always been, yes, my clients need to be independent. They need not to always need a counsellor. Yes. Right? So that was how it started out. But then as the time went on, I decided to okay, make it a book and then create a workbook outside the book. So the first challenge I had was how can I make all of these ideas? Um, how can I put it down so that it makes sense? Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> yes. You know, how can I make it logical? Mm -hmm. How can I put in a way that is logical and it's easy to read? Yes. So that's that it's not like I'm just instructing, it's engaging, yes. you know, readable, um, interactive. And that's where the idea of the exercises came along. That okay, mm -hmm. maybe at the end of every chapter, I would like them to not just read it, but to take away something, to do something. Because when yes. you do, the more you do, repetitiveness, yes, you know, it becomes your own. You know, so that's where it came from. It took me about two years to write. Okay. From when we had the idea until mm -hmm. it actually became a book. A book. Well done. Well done. Bravo. You know, I, I the reason I asked that question is because um, you know, I, I find that when you're writing a book, it's like you're building a relationship with someone, you know, and you're having a conversation with yourself that is the other person. And it's revealing you to yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And sometimes you, when, when you hit what's known as a, a, a writer's block, it's not necessarily a writer's block. Mm -mm. It's like you've gotten to a point in that relationship with that book journey, with that book you're writing. And it's told you something about yourself that's making you reflect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you find absolutely, that? Absolutely. And that's why it was important for me to write my introduction. Because I wanted whoever's speaking to Snapback to be able to relate. Mm -hmm. You know, not just to see it has, okay, a compilation of to do's, mm -hmm. but I wanted them to be able to see that this person has been on a journey. Yes. She's coming from somewhere. And it took a level of vulnerability you know what i mean to, to open to, up to, to the world yeah you know these are the things that i've gone through as a person and i know from what i've seen and from a lot of people that some people's journey are a lot even more difficult than mine that's mm -hmm. way way more difficult yes but you, your experience is you know it's different how you experience a situation no matter how similar it might be with somebody else, it's yours mm -hmm. you know they say beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Yep, right? Yes. But also the tragedies, the not so good experiences that you have, is mm -hmm. how you perceive it, how you experience it. So I have been able to hopefully put that down and people are able to relate with that, you know, and then move on into, okay, I get that. Then how do I move on? How do I start back? How mm -hmm. do I get what? How do I become who I should really be? How do I put my dreams? How do my dreams become a reality? Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's 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 my um, that's how I see Snapback. Yeah, and that's I'm, I'm hoping that people would perceive it as well. Uh, they will. They will. I haven't got a <clears throat> excuse me. I haven't got a copy yet, but I promise you, I am going to order a copy. I want to have a copy, and I'm going to read it. And do you work with professionals? 
I work with professionals. Yes, okay. absolutely. We will talk offline. Uh, 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 yes, we'll talk offline. I, I'm having I'm having a number of ideas now. We'll talk offline about this. Um, I think there's some ways we can collaborate and do some work together. Um, you know, and I'm really pleased that you've come on the show to share this. It's not just the information about how to build your self-esteem, but you've also, you know, led us into your life to know what your own journey has been like. And a lot of us, a lot of people can't relate. I can relate. A lot of people out there listening can relate. And I am hoping that, you know, more people will get to know about you and you can help them overcome their own challenges because we all need people, you know, and one way we can you know, build relationships with people is by, we don't need to have, like, I've built relationships with people I've never met mm -hmm. through listening to podcasts, reading books, you know, attending some of these, you know, um, webinars and so on and so forth, taking, you know, listening to their own life journeys and all that. And people need to know you and come to, you know, um, see how that you can, how you can help them as well, because, one thing that's important to me is people who are genuine. You know, that's important. Yeah. You know, uh, I just don't want to have any and anyone in my circle. You've got to be genuine in your own life. And, Absolutely. you know, I, I want people like you in, you know, around so that, you know, I can expose you to my own network as well. And you get to help people as well. So um, thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much for, now, for having last, me. Last, last, um, um two last questions how can people reach out to you where can people find you you know i know you've mentioned your book you know um page are you in social media what's form of connection if yeah. anybody wants to reach so, out to you and connect with you and work with you how can they reach you people can reach out to me you can reach out to me through my social media handles godium cc that's g-a-u-d-i-u-m-c-c so on Twitter, that's my social media handle. On um, Instagram, that's my handle. Um, you can check me out on my website, www.gordiumservices.com. Um, yeah, so those are the ways. And if you get the book, there are other, I think all of that information is at the back of the book as well. Fantastic, okay. fantastic. And the second last question, I call this a superhero question. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Which superhero, fictional or non-fictional, describes you as a person best and why? What if I don't have a superhero? <laughs> the question, fictional or non-fictional, it could be a real person or not a real person. It could be someone you look up to, it could be a mentor, it could be somebody, you know, whoever. Right. That person is your superhero. Someone My superhero. Who... I only have one, Good. right? And it's not cheesy, it's Jesus. Good. And why? It's not cheesy. And I agree with you. And that's phenomenal that you said Jesus is your superhero. Oh my goodness. This is happening on this show. <laughs> the first person to ever mention Jesus as their superhero. That is amazing. <laughs> that is phenomenal. And why? His heart of compassion. Amazing. That reflects that everything you do in terms of what you do. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my goodness. Jesus is your superhero. Uh, you know what? I'm going to do a t-shirt. Jesus is my superhero. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for me for being on the show. It's been fantastic. It's been phenomenal. It's been informative. It's been of so much value. And I know listeners are going to appreciate this. And I really hope people reach out to you so you can work with them and help them. And they get your book as well. Thank you so much. We will keep talking. Me. And um, yeah, I'm sure we're going to do some work together. Thank you so much for having me. I'm grateful. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. And have a wonderful, 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 wonderful day. We do. Take thank care. You. Bye. If this video got your attention, you can listen to more on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts or Anchor, where you can gain more value from these amazing contents.
and if you find that you are enjoying this video or you are learning something new please leave a like and subscribe to our channel the school of risk podcast for more great content like this coming your way every week